the men's ministry workshop. I'm so glad that each and every one of you are here for this uh, men's ministry workshop. The hope is that you will be encouraged, built up, strengthened, and also admonished to rally around other men and encourage them and, and build them up in their holy faith. And men's ministry is it's an important ministry. God has called us to minister to one another. And that's what men's ministry is all about. It's about men ministering to men. And that's what God has called us to do. He's called us to minister one to another because as the Bible says, we all know what it says, that iron sharpens iron. And we want to build one another up. And so this afternoon, I want to share a word of encouragement from 2 Kings chapter 2, and then I want to open it up at the end, and I want to do Q&A, uh, and so if you have any questions, you have any ideas or any insight on how to uh, make men's ministry more impactful, at the end, we'll, we'll have the Q&A We'll open it up for a word of encouragement and and uh, see what the Lord has. So I'm excited about what God has. Um, I want to thank Pastor Ray for giving me this opportunity uh, to be here and to teach this workshop to encourage you mighty men of God. And I know God has amazing things for each and every one of you because you are, you are God's men. God has called each and every one of you. He's gifted each and every one of you. He's given you the ability... And most of all, he's given you the word of God and the Holy Spirit to do what he's called you to do. So uh, let's turn to 2 Kings chapter 2. And as you're turning there, let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, the kickoff to this conference. Thank you for Pastor Don McClure. Thank you, Father, for the encouragement, for the word that he gave to each one, Lord. And we thank you that we get to continue, Lord God, in this conference, in this time that you've set aside for each and every one of us, I pray, Lord God, that we would have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, the church. I pray that we would ready our hearts to receive, Lord God, that we would repent if we have to repent, that we would confess, Lord God, that you would cleanse and wash and you would purify us. I pray that as men of God, you would anoint us with your Holy Spirit from on high, that you would equip us, Lord, over this weekend, and that it would be an amazing weekend, Lord God, and that you would do an amazing work deep in the caverns of our heart, that you would consecrate us, you would set us apart, and we would set ourselves aside, and we would make room, God, for the working of the Holy Spirit in and through our lives, in Jesus' name, amen. Second, First Kings chapter 2, verse 1. Now the days of David drew near that he should die. And he charged his son Solomon, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel." Now, we know that the days of David are drawing near. In other words, David is about to die. He's about to pass on, and the mantle is going to be passed to his son, Solomon. And in verse 1, he says, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong. In other words, be courageous. Be as bold as a lion. And I think that's very important because God has called us to be courageous. He's called us as men of God, as ministers to men, to be courageous. To have that God-given courage. 
the kind of courage that we need to be men of God. And courage is contagious. It, it is. It's contagious. When we have courage, other men around us, they, they know that we have courage. And our courage doesn't come from our strength, but our courage comes from Almighty God. God gives us the courage. We have courage through Christ Jesus who gives us the strength that we need. And we know the admonition in the Bible to men is to be strong, to be courageous, to be as bold as a lion. And I like what Charles Swindoll said. He said, courage is not limit, limited to the battlefield or Indianapolis 500 or bravely catching a thief in your house. The real tests of courage are much quieter. They are the inner test, like remaining faithful when nobody's looking, like enduring pain when the room is empty, like standing alone when you're misunderstood. We are not called to cower or cuddle in our comfort zones, but instead we are called to be courageous men of God. We have sons, some of us have sons and daughters, grandchildren or great-grandchildren, men's ministry. Some of you are men's ministry leaders. Some of you are small group leaders. Some of you lead men uh, at work. God has called us to be courageous. And there's no time in this day and age to cower. There's no time in this day and age to cuddle because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And God is looking for brave, bold, courageous men who will stand up for the truth, who will stand on the word of God, and who will not cower. By the way, cowards will not get into heaven. It says at the end of Revelation that cowards, those who are cowardly, will not get into heaven. And uh, we are not to cower. We are not to back down. We are called to be men of courage. And we have that, that courage that comes from Jesus Christ. And David, he encouraged Solomon to be courageous. And he had to be, he had to be courageous because Solomon's uh, brother, Adonai, the son of Haggith, exalted himself in chapter 1. This is Solomon's brother. He exalted himself in chapter 1. And he said, I will be king. He wasn't called to be king. Solomon was called to be the next king in line. And he exalted himself in chapter 1 and he said, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. And then later on in uh, Kings... Solomon had to have his own brother killed because he tried usurping him. He tried undermining him. He tried taking the throne that belonged to Solomon. And Solomon had to order the death of his brother. And that had to have take, taken courage. That had to have not been easy to do that. But Solomon had to have that kind of, of courage. So we, we need to be men of courage. Warren Wiersbe in his book, The Integrity Crisis, describes the kind of man that God is looking for. And here's what he said in the book, The Integrity Crisis. He has the courage to face problems honestly, the wisdom to understand them, the strength to do something about them, and the faith to trust God to do the rest. He's not afraid of losing friends or making enemies. He can't be intimidated by threats nor bought with bribes. He is God's man and he is not up for sale. You and I are God's man. We are God's men and we are not up for sale. We have to, we have, to have the courage to face problems honestly and the strength to do something about them. Being courageous is not easy. Making hard decisions for our families, for our children, our, our, our wives, or our ministry, it's not easy, but we have to make those decisions that God is calling us to make, and we have to have the backbone and, and the courage to do so. 
Unfortunately, we know what's happening in our society. Men are being dumbed down and uh, masculinity is being stripped from men. God's called us to be strong and courageous. We, we, God's given us masculinity for a reason. We are tender warriors. He wired us that way in our society is dumbing down men and, and making men out to be like if they have no value. And God's called us to be men of courage, men who are not afraid to face problems, men who have faith to trust God, who are not afraid of losing friends or, or making enemies. We can be intimidated. Because we need to be courageous. Notice, secondly, what it says here in verse 2. I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore. And number two, prove yourself to be a man. Prove yourself a man. In other words, provide evidence that you are a man of God. That's what the word prove means. It means provide evidence that you are a man of God. Prove yourself a man. Provide evidence that you are a man of God. As it's been said, it's more caught than it is taught. The way we live out our lives for Christ is an example to other men. By keeping the charge of God and by proving ourselves to be a man. We're living epistles, the Bible says, written by God, read by all men. We're, we're imitating Christ... And therefore, others are imitating us. Others are following us. And so, in this men's ministry workshop, we want to prove ourselves to be men. We want to provide evidence. Is there evidence? Is there enough evidence in our lives if we were put on trial to prove that we are godly men when nobody is watching, when nobody is around? We're called to provide that evidence. Prove yourself a man. And we want to encourage other men around us to, to do the same thing. And the way that we can provide evidence that we are men of God by our private life with Jesus. Spending time in, in privacy, in, in that secret place, if you will. Spending time in in prayer, spending time in his, in his word and, and um, getting around other men and encourage them. So how can we be examples or how can we approve ourselves to be men of God? Verse 3, and keep the charge of the Lord your God. So one way is keeping the charge of the Lord your God. Therefore prove yourself a man. How? By keeping the charge of the Lord your God. The word charge means to keep the orders of God. It also means to keep the instruction or the command of God. I love that word charge. How many of you guys like that word charge? How many of you have been charged to do something? How many of you have charged other men to do something? God has given us that ability to, to charge other men in a loving way. We are called to provoke one another to love and, and good works. God is, have, has given us that, that ability to charge other men. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul says, I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. So Paul the apostle was charging the leaders in the church. He was charging the men. He was charging the church by the Lord that this epistle be read. So that was a charge. Hey guys, take 1 Thessalonians. Here's Paul. Take 1 Thessalonians and I charge you by the Lord that this letter be read to all the holy brethren. And in men's ministry, that's what we want to do. We want to read the word of God to other holy brothers, to other holy brethren. It's a charge. And so for men's ministry, I really... Uh, and firm on encouraging other men in the Word of God. Not with philosophy, not with psychology, not with uh, a political agenda, but with the Word of God. Because I know 
That is what is going to make men become who God has called them to be. That's how you and I can become effective is by reading the word of God. So he charged them that the letter be read to all the holy brethren. And then remember the, Paul, the charge that Paul gave to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4. He says, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing. And then he went on to say, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering for the time will come, he said, when they will no longer endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, they will accumulate or they will heap up for themselves teachers who will be turned away these people will be turned away from the truth and turned aside to turned aside to fables and stories and endless genealogies but Paul he charged Timothy he says I charge you and the charge was before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and he said I charge you preach the word because when you give other men the word of God and they walk away after you giving them the word of God, the results are up to the Lord. And it's up to those other men to take what they've heard and to flesh it out, to live it out, to apply it to their lives. And as we get closer to the return of Jesus Christ, we know uh, the day is, is at hand. We know the night is the day is far spent the the night is sooner than when we first believed and we want to ready men so that they can ready other men and we want to ready men so they can ready their families so they can pour into their their children their sons and other men and their grandchildren because man the time is short there should be a sense of urgency there should be a greater hunger and a greater desire for us to take up our cross and to charge other men before God and Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead and we ought to be charged to preach the word of God. In Numbers chapter 27, the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, a man in whom is the spirit and basically he said, unleash him to lead. That's what the Lord said to Moses. Take Joshua, a man in whom is the spirit, and raise him up. Give him the ability to lead. And if we want to be successful in, in men's ministry, we want to unleash other men to do the work of the ministry. We should raise up other leaders. We should uh, duplicate ourselves. It's important to pour into other men and that's what I've had the ability to do uh, at my church I've had the ability to take other men and and uh, just pour into them uh, at the beginning of, of this year I finished up almost a year and a half discipleship just pouring into to men and then before that we did uh, several other classes where, where we just take men pour into them raise them up equip them and unleash them to do the work of the ministry because as a team we're greater and we can do greater damage to darkness to the enemy's strongholds that he has and so we want to unleash men to do the work of the ministry and never be never never be afraid of of men failing because it's just part of it when we unleash other men they're going to fail. I fail. We fail along the way. The, the ticket is not to stay stuck in that failure, not to continue to repeat that failure over and over again. But we should be willing to unleash men to do the work of the ministry, to get involved in what God is calling us and them to get involved in. So keep the charge, he said, and keep the charge of the Lord your God. Verse 3, to walk in his ways to walk in his ways so if we want to prove ourselves to be men we want to raise up other men we want to charge them uh, before the Lord God we want to uh, encourage them to walk in God's ways 
Now, you know what the word walk means. It means proceed. It means to go forward. It also means to press on. It, it also is to journey. Are you walking with God? And are you encouraging other men? Are you teaching other men how to walk with God? You might be thinking, well, I don't know a lot. I don't have a lot under my belt. I don't have a lot in my toolbox. I don't have a lot of tools in my shed. You may not, but as a born-again believer and with what you do know, take that and use it to pour into another man. And it'll, it'll be encouraging to you. Alan Redpath said, the Christian life doesn't get easier as one gets older. Isn't that true? You might think, wow, man, it's supposed to get easier. The battles continue and the battles get, get stronger. Turn to 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 29 through 37. Everybody there? 2 Samuel chapter 22, go left. We pick it up in verse 29 through verse 37. Verse 29, for you are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord shall enlighten my darkness, for by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power. He makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. I, I love this. And it, it reminded me that I... I have to walk each day in the light of Jesus Christ. I have to walk each day in the light of Jesus Christ because as it says here in verse 29, for you are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord shall enlighten my darkness. The Lord shall enlighten my darkness. I have to walk each day in the light of Jesus Christ. In other words, I have to choose every single day to walk in the light of Jesus Christ. Every single day I have to make a choice when I get up to spend time in God's word, to spend time in, in prayer with the Lord. So each day when I get up, I choose to spend time with the Lord. I, I have daily devotions every single day. I, that's the first thing that I do in the morning when I wake up is I read God's word because I know that it prepares me for the day because uh, there are a lot of different battles that come my way. And there's calls that, that come my way. There's, uh, I, I hear of things happening. I get, uh, you know, the news that somebody has passed or just all these different things that, that come my way. And so each and every day, I have to choose each day to walk in the light of Jesus Christ. And I have to remember, as it says here, he is my rock. He is my rock in verse 32. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? So he is my rock and my stable place. You want to help men become stabilized? You want to, or you want to stabilize men? Because a lot of times we can get caught up and we become unstable and and you meet men that are unstable they don't have no stability they want to help men become stable take them to the word of God and teach them how to build their lives on the solid rock of Jesus Christ now 
I'm all for men's ministry, big men's ministry. I'm all for large groups of men gathering. I think that's important. We need that. We need to rally together, build one another up, and, you know, do all those fun things and, and all the things that God has called us to do when we come together. But I also think that men's ministry is very effective when it's one man meeting with another man and pouring into that man and then listening to what that man has to say and learning and growing together and admonishing one another to build our lives on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. He is my rock and my stable place. We're not going to find stability in this world because this world is sinking sand, but we're going to find our stability in the Lord. And remember that he's familiar with our our weaknesses. David had weaknesses. And God's familiar with our, our weaknesses. And all that I am as a man, I learn from God. And we learn from one another as well. But we need to remember that God's familiar with our weaknesses. He knows what you and I need. And um, and all that we learn, we learn from, from Jesus. Amen. Man, Jesus was mighty. I'm reading in my quiet time in in uh, the book of Luke right now, man, and he, he wasn't afraid to call those religious people out. He wasn't afraid to call those religious men out. I mean, he called them out and he said, brood of vipers, you know, you, you're clean on the outside, but on the inside, you're, you're like rotten bones. You're, you're dirty on the inside. The cup may, be, cup may be clean on the outside, but on the inside, it's dirty. In other words, your hearts need to get right. And, uh, we, we need to learn from, from Jesus. He's, our, he's our, our great example. Back to our passage in um, 1 Kings. Notice what it says next. Keep, keep his statutes, keep his commandments, keep his judgments, and uh, keep his testimonies. So keep his statutes, keep his commandments, keep his judgments, and keep his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses as it is written in the law of Moses so we need to keep we need to guard you know what I'm talking about you you have things that you guard you have things in your life that that you keep and we need to guard we need to keep God's word and we need we need to teach other men to keep God's word some of you may have heard this before. D. L. Moody said, The Bible will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from the Bible. And the Bible is, is radical. The Bible is refreshing. And the Bible is real. And we need to teach other men about God's word. We need to encourage them to keep the Bible. It's, it's radical, it's refreshing, and it's real. And each one of you, you have radically been changed by the Bible, right? How many of you have been radically changed by the Bible? God's word does a radical thing. And then after you're radically changed by, by the word of God, then your family, they wonder, why are you so radical now? Why are you so strange now? Why are you, they, they, they even start calling you names and, and they don't even invite you over anymore because now in their minds, you're radical. Well, God's word will make you radical. It radically changes you. It radically changes me. And it, it's constantly radically changing us and God's word is radical. And that's why we need to be in the radical word of God so that we can be radically transformed, radically, radically changed from the inside out. And when we keep it, it does a radical work on the inside. And it's also refreshing. It refreshes our souls. It renews us in the spirit of our, our minds. And, and it just, that Holy Spirit water that comes from the word, it it refreshes us. It reinvigorates us. And we're encouraged. And as we're refreshed, we're able to refresh others that are around us or the other men that God brings into our life. And so the Bible is radical. It's refreshing. 
and it's real. And it's what real men need more than anything else today. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that people are caught up on. People are, are caught up on watching, you know, everything that's going on in, in our country politically. And they're, they're constantly watching Fox News or, you know, checking out what's, what's going on, on on social media or Facebook and just scrolling and, and trying to, you know, stay in tune with everything that, that's going on. What real men of God need is the real word of God. Because that's what changes us. That's what refreshes us. And that's what gives us the strength for today. We can't rely on yesterday's strength. I can't rely on yesterday's manna. What I read yesterday out of the word, I can't rely on that. Although I can meditate on it. I can memorize it. But I need fresh manna for today. I need to feed my soul spiritually for today. I need to be refreshed each and every day. And it's what real men of God need. And you know what? You'll, you'll never, ever go wrong with pouring the word of God into other men. Even if it's a half hour a week or an hour a week or, or whatever it is, you'll, you'll never go wrong because God's word is it's real. It's, it's sharp. It's sharper than the sharpest knife. It's, it, it penetrates deep into the innermost being. The word of God is living. It's powerful. It's, it's practical. It's, it's radical. It's refreshing. And it, it really changes real men. And if we want to be real men of God, then we look to the word of God because Jesus, he quoted the word over and over again and all the men in the Bible it's it was their go-to it's what they went to all the time and the Bible that Jesus read was the Old Testament Paul and the the apostles the disciples they refer to the Old Testament and we have both now we have the old and we have the new and we need both because they're intertwined they come together we can't have one without the other we need the old and we need the new. And uh, they're both refreshing to our lives. So keep his statutes, keep his commandments, keep his judgments, keep his testimonies as it is written in the law of, the Mo of Moses. At the end of verse 3, that you may prosper in all that you do wherever you go. If you base your life on the word of God, you will prosper wherever you go. You will have spiritual success. And if you base your life on the word of God, you will be radically different. You will prosper in all that you do and wherever you go. Man, God wants you to, to, to prosper spiritually. He wants you to be successful. And he wants to use you to help other men to prosper spiritually. He wants to use you to help other men to become successful in their walks with the Lord, in their ministry, in the things that, that God has called them to do. So how can we prosper? How can we become successful? I know some of you are familiar with these verses. Maybe all of you are, but I'll read them. It says, only be strong and very courageous, Joshua chapter 1, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. And notice what he says here. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, check this out, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Success doesn't happen overnight, but we become successful as we read God's word today and we read God's word tomorrow and we continue in reading God's word. And then he says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed or troubled for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So just a few things from that verse. Do not turn from it. Do not depart from it and meditate in it. Do not turn from it, do not depart from it, and meditate in it. 
So, if we want to be spiritually successful, then we need to make sure that we aren't making a U-turn and turning away from the Word of God. It's clear. Do not turn from, from it. Joshua needed to have that reminder from God because he was getting ready, as you know, to take God's people into the promised land, into the land flowing with milk and honey, into Canaan. And there were giants in the land. There were enemies in the land. And, and it wasn't going to be easy. It wasn't going to be just like walking through the park on a Sunday afternoon. It wasn't just like hopping in your ride and, and cruising down the boulevard, you know, with your windows down. It, it was going to be hard. They had enemies, the Amalekites and all these different ites. In, in the land, and they would have to battle for the land. Although God gave them the land, they still had to battle for it. They, they had to go in and battle, so it would be one conquest after another. And the battle in our lives as men is constant. I mean, even as, as we get older, there's still going to be a battle. There's still the temptations. You might think, man, when I was young, there was a lot of temptations. Uh, when you get older, the temptations are still going to be there. And so it's one battle after another. And that's why we have to make sure that we aren't turning from God's word. And we're not departing from it. Everything in this world, even our flesh, sometimes screams and, and it's calling us to turn and to depart from what we know is to be true and that's the word of God. We can't turn from it. We can't depart from it. He says, do not turn, do not depart from it. Because if you do, then you won't have that success. You won't prosper spiritually. If we want to prosper spiritually, we need to make sure that we aren't turning, we aren't departing. And we have to make sure that we're meditating in it. In Hebrew, the word meditate means to chew the cud like a cow. The cow has multiple stomachs, right? We know that the cow has, has multiple stomachs. So the chewing of the cud enables the cow to get out all the nutrients out of the grass. And because the cow has multiple stomachs, uh, the chewing of the cud allows the cow to get all the nutrients out of the grass. In the same way, you and I are to meditate. You and I are to chew on the Word of God and to digest it. We are to chew on it and we are to digest it. We are to meditate. Here's what I say from that. Read, chew, and do. Read, chew, and do. Because when we do that, then we will be spiritually successful. And we want to help other men become spiritually successful in their walks with Christ. So, as he said back in Joshua, read it, meditate, chew on it, and he said observe or do it. Apply it. Apply it to your life. So read, chew, and do. And as you read, chew, and do, you'll be radically different. You'll be uh, refreshed. And God will use you as a real man to help other real men who need the word of God. But we need to meditate. Remember what it says in Psalm chapter 1. Uh, I was going to quote it, but I better not because I, I just forgot. Okay, anyways, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the, of, of the scornful, or sits in the seat of the sinner. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on it he meditates day and night. And then it goes on to saying, he shall be like a tree that's planted by streams of living water, whose leaves shall not wither, but whatever he does shall prosper. So blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the path of the sinner or sits in the seat of the scornful. We could be sitting in the seat of the scornful by listening to all this media stuff that, that is, it's not doing us any good. It's not doing us any good. I'm not saying that we should know what's going on with current affairs. We should. 
We should know what's we should know what's going on culturally. We should know the current affairs so we know how to bring the the gospel in, so we know how to minister to people, so we know how to meet men right where they're at. But we can actually sit in the seat of the scornful and listen to all this this news that's coming from ABC and CBS and NBC and MSNBC and CNN and it's just all They're just trying to pull the wool over our eyes. They're not telling us the truth. And we can sit in the seat of the scornful and and listen to them being scornful towards what is true. And we don't want to do that. We want to be like a tree that's planted by streams of living water. And that tree that's planted by streams of living water is strong and the roots go down deep. Because, as it says in Psalm 1, he is meditating In God's word, day and night. He's delighting and he's meditating day and night. And as a result, he shall be like a tree that's planted by streams of living water. One last verse, and I'll finish with this, and then we'll open it up for some Q&A. Verse 4 in 1 Kings. That the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, if your sons take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul. He said, you shall not lack a man on the throne. You shall not lack a leader on the throne of Israel. So he, he ends, or I end by saying, pay attention to, to what God is speaking. Take heed, pay attention, and walk before God in truth with all your heart. And with all your soul. That the Lord may fulfill his word. God wants to fulfill his word in in our lives. And uh, when his word is fulfilled, amazing things happen. And if, he said, if your sons take heed to their way, we have to we have to pay attention. We have to take heed to our way. Are there any trends in your life right now that aren't good? If there are trends in your life that aren't good right now, Uh, God's brought that to your attention. He's saying, pay attention. Take heed to your ways. If there are some trends that are not good, radically deal with them. Radically confess it. Radically repent. Radically turn from it. And and do what you know God has been calling you to do. Because if we don't pay attention to the word, we're going to be sideswiped. And so we have to pay attention and we have to walk before the Lord our God in truth with all of our heart and with all of our soul. And so with that in mind, uh, be courageous. God's called you to be a courageous Christian who takes up your cross. Prove yourself a man. Provide evidence that you are a godly man and that evidence will just come out as that fruit is displayed in your life keep the charge and uh, charge other men charge them before God and the Lord Jesus Christ to preach the word to be ready in and out of season pay attention to your walk walk in truth you and I have been called by God to be men who minister to other men We are spiritual champions, we are spiritual leaders, and we are spiritual warriors for Christ. That's who we are. We're spiritual champions, we're spiritual leaders, and we're spiritual warriors for Christ. And we want to help other men, whether it's ministering to just one other man or ministering to multiple men. We want to Help them to become spiritual champions, spiritual leaders in their homes, spiritual leaders in their churches, and spiritual warriors for Christ. So that's my encouragement to us at this workshop. What I want to do now is open it up, and um, if we have any, if you have any questions or um, you you have anything on your heart, every anything on your mind, uh, just fire away. If I can't answer it, I'm sure there's somebody else here in this room that can because there's a lot of wise men here. And uh, so let, let's talk about men's ministry. I think we have up until 3.20. So we have 20 minutes. 
20 minutes. Any questions? Any feedback? Yes. That's, that's good. How do we teach other men in this country? How do we teach them how to be men of God? Because as it was said, there are a lot of men who don't know how to be men of God. How do we model that for them? How do we teach them? I would say that if you know another man who doesn't know how to be a man of God, bring him alongside of you and um, teach him how to pray teach him how to read God's Word teach him how to have QT which is quiet time teach him how, how to have QT and that the you, you want to start there because if you know another man who doesn't know how to be a man of God those those are the tools and and then he, he's probably not plugged in and he might not be going to church on a regular basis or or he might be in church on a regular basis it might just be taking up a you know a chair but not involved because he might not know how to get involved in and it's our job our duty we're charged to help other men become men of God and they might they might not see it because we sometimes have blinders on and so I would say pray teach them how to pray uh, pray with them teach them how to read God's Word uh, teach them how to study God's Word inductively how to pull out the facts how to use God's Word to uh, to cross-reference because the Bible interprets the Bible and and I think the big thing is is teach them how to apply it now that you know this now what are you going to do with it now that you know this how are you going to live it out so we are we are in a battle and the battle is for men and the enemy and even people in our country leaders in our country so-called leaders in our country they don't want men speaking the truth they don't want men to stand up for righteousness I mean, Tim Scott the other day spoke up um, after the presidential uh, talk and, and he gave his rebuttal. It, it was amazing. He's getting blasted for it because he talked about Jesus Christ and his mom praying for him. He talked about the Word of God and so on. He's not going to stand stand back. He's, it, we're not called to stand down. We're, we're called to stand up. And that's what other men need to see through courageous men like you and I. Good question. Mm. Offhand. Um. What, one book that came to my mind, um, Warren Wiersbe, uh, The Strategies of Satan. That's, that's a small book, but it's a, it's a really good book because it, it prepares men on, on how to recognize the, the strategies of Satan. So that, that's a good book. It's not that, that big of a book, but it's, it's a good book. It's you know, a book that will encourage other, other men. And so that's one. Um, I guys, Mike, yeah, spiritual leadership by Oswald Sanders. It's a good one, yeah.
I think it's Hughes, isn't it? Is it Tim Hughes or? I think it's Tim Hughes. Yeah, and there's a couple other books too uh, by Warren Wiersbe on being a servant and on being a, a leader uh, by Warren Wiersbe. Those are two good books as well that I have taken uh, men through. So those those are, are good books as well. Al, did you? So the so the the question is how do we how are, how how do we be discerning how do we raise up uh, other men or young men right sure so how do we make it practically simple for other young men how do we pour into them? How, how do we help them to become um, followers, disciples of Christ, kind of, sort of thing? Because they have a lot going on. They're overwhelmed with maybe their family life, work life, you know, different things like that. So practically, how can we pour into them without giving them a more, more of a to-do to, uh, to list? How do, how do we do that? I, I guess it goes back to just uh, meeting with them, uh, setting that time aside, and 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 being intentional, and and meeting with maybe a younger guy or maybe a couple younger guys once a week. But I would I would encourage because sometimes I've seen it and men they start doing that and then they get overwhelmed themselves. I would say make a commitment, commit first of all. And then get a commitment from that young person. And, and you guys agree together on that commitment and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to meet twice a month at this place at such and such time. And if he's really ready to buy into it, he's going to make that commitment. So I think the commitment is first. And then just simply keep it simple. Like when we teach the Bible, we simply teach it simply. Just keep it simple. And don't overwhelm them with a lot of homework, but, but do give them enough that will keep them accountable so that when you meet up with them again in two weeks, they're able to come back and, and, and prove themselves as a man that they have done what you asked them to do. Like read through through First John and... And, you know, come back, write out some questions. You know, who's the author? What is the author saying? How do I apply this to my life? Those kinds of things. So I would, I would keep it simple, but don't let them off the hook either. Because a lot of times, you know, the fish want to jump off the hook when it gets hard. And uh, it, it's going to get hard. You know, Christianity is, is hard. It's, it's not easy. And... And especially because we have to take up our cross and we have to deny ourselves and we have to follow Christ and, and that's what warriors do. It's not easy and and so we want to, I think, just keep it simple and and um, not give them a big to-do list. But we don't we don't eat, we don't want to make it like just a walk through the park. We do want to provoke, right? We do want to challenge other men because as we push other men, if we challenge them, we provoke them to love and good works then they're going to start growing 
but if we make it easy, you know, kind of thing, then, uh, so, I, I mean, that's, anyone else want to add to that? That's good, and and for men, I think it's it's a little harder for us because we not we're not like big gatherers. We don't like to gather together. I mean, like women, they love to gather together, right? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You've gone to a restaurant, you and your wife, and another guy and his wife, and maybe another couple, and all of a sudden, all three women they're in the restroom. They're all hanging out and they're all talking together. Now, would you ask your buddy to go to the restroom with you? Heck no. Absolutely not. Hey, bro, let's go to the restroom. Well, of course, we can talk. No. I mean, so women, they, they like to gather, and that's awesome. That's the way God has wired them to be. As men, it, we don't gather the way women gather as easily. And so I, ha I think we have to think of ways that we can, you know, be creative. How can we gather together? What, what do men like to to do well we like to gather together around food you know we like to gather together around car shows or fishing or hiking or you know working out and I think we have to think of creative ways and think of how well what does this this guy like to do maybe he likes to go hiking well maybe that's a great opportunity to go hiking with him and along the way you guys are, are as you guys are trekking together you're talking about the Word of God and uh, or you're, you're fishing next to each other talking about the Word of God or working out you know talking about the Word of God or having a barbecue and talking about the Word of God and and I think we have to think of creative ways to pull these men in so we can spur them on in their in their faith in Christ so any other any other questions I, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, I try not to back down from my responsibility first in the home. But any time I'm out and about, I'm not ashamed. I'm not yeah. ashamed of the gospel. And there's a lot of guys that I have a brother. Hang on, you're just too strong. There's a time and there's a place. There's a and I'm like, any time, look, any time's a good time. Shame of the gospel, dude, you know. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, we need, we don't want to repel men. We want to reach men. Young, old, and, and, every, and all men in between. We, we never want to re, repel them. We never want to push them away. We want to reach them. And uh, like you said, being that example, modeling it for them, being that mentor, discipling. That's what this whole conference is about, disciples making disciples. And that's, that's the ticket right there. That's, that's the ticket to growing men that, that when we are helping other men, when we're making disciples, uh, the ticket to, you know, the helping this young man is, is by continuing to, to be available to him, by continuing to encourage him, pour into him, pray with him, pray for him, uh, remind him of the things that come from, from God's word. And, and like you said, men are, a lot of men don't want to step up, but we're called to step in. We're called to, to step up and we're called to step out in faith. That's what God has called us to do. Step in, step up and step out. And now's the time. You had a question, my friend? Good. And that was love. That Amen. Was that was letting them know that I care about you. I care about you, man. You know, and I see that you care about me. I see that you want to do what I'm doing. And I praise God at that time mm. that I was in the world all the time. And I was praying about that. So they wanted to be like their dad. And I, and I, reach, I reach out to all the kids on the street because we have a lot of males. Yeah. Okay. They've never been shown how to be a man. And by turning into a teenager, they would have attitude. And their biggest thing is that you're not wanted anymore. You would ask them, if you really get to know somebody, they feel inadequate. Yeah. They don't feel worthy. They need to feel loved. And when a male, I'm speaking from my own experiences, when I feel loved by a young man, Amen. Mm, it's good. Amen. Amen. That's it. Love, love God and and love others, and that's that's living it out right there. That's living out your faith out loud when you are showing the love of Christ and. And uh, you're right, a lot of these men and, you know, they, they didn't have a father and they, you know, I, I know someone that, that is up in age and his father has never told him that, that he loves him and that's hard for him. But I, I tell him all the time, I love you. And uh, he has a really hard time saying it back because his father has never told him. And I, I think it's important not only to show it, but to say it. And yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Amen. Well, let's wrap it up, guys. It's time. Father, thank you for all these men of God. Lord, I pray that you pour out your love into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
I pray that we would lean into you, Lord, the rest of this day and tomorrow, that we would learn all that you have for us. I pray that we'd be radically transformed. I pray that we would be refreshed. I pray, Lord God, that you would give us real truth that will change us from the inside out and that we'd be the hands and feet of Jesus. Pour out your spirit upon each one of these men. Anoint them, Lord, with the double portion. And Lord God, send them back home. Send them back into their churches, Lord, and use them supernaturally in a powerful way, in a mighty way to do your bidding and to raise up other godly men who will prove themselves to be men of God. We love you. We honor you. We bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen.